Christian head covering and hair covering is the veiling of the head by women in a variety of Christian traditions. Some Christian women, based on historic Catholic, Lutheran, Reformed and Methodist teaching, wear the head covering in public worship though some women belonging to these traditions may also choose to wear the head covering outside of church, while others, especially Anabaptist Christians, believe women should wear head coverings all the time. The practice of Christian head covering was inspired by a traditional interpretation of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 2 to 16 in the Christian Bible. Although the head covering was practiced by most Christian women until the latter part of the 20th century, it is now a minority practice among contemporary Christians in the West, though it continues to be the normal practice in other parts of the world, such as Russia, Ukraine, India, Pakistan, and South Korea. The style of the Christian head covering and the hair covering varies by region. History New Testament Topic. The practice of Christian head covering is commanded in Holy Scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 2-16 in the Christian Bible. The practice of Christian modesty, in clothing and long hair, for women is commanded in Holy Scripture, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9 and 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 15. According to holy tradition, the practice of Christian hair covering is commanded in holy scripture because if it's wrong to not wear a head covering for praying and prophesying, then it is wrong to not wear a hair covering for modesty. While many Anabaptists, such as Amish and Mennonites, advocate the wearing of head coverings at all times, as a woman might pray or prophesy at any time, the historic Catholic, Lutheran, Reformed and Methodist teaching is that praying and prophesying refers to the activities taking place in public worship, as the Apostle Paul is dealing with public worship issues in 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. Anabaptists disagree saying that because Christians are commanded to pray without ceasing, this means that the head covering is to be worn without ceasing since it is to be worn for prayer. They also mention Christ telling Christians to pray at home and not just in church. Orthodox Christians wear the head covering for praying and prophesying, and the hair covering for modesty, in public worship and at home. The majority of biblical scholars have held that, "...verses 4-7 refer to a literal veil or covering of cloth." Although, since the 20th century, some have interpreted the covering referenced in 1 Corinthians to be the long hair of a woman. Early Church Topic. Christian head covering and hair covering was unanimously practiced by the women of the early church. This was attested by multiple writers throughout the first centuries of Christianity. The early Christian writer Tertullian explains that in his day, the Corinthian church was still practicing head covering. This is only 150 years after the Apostle Paul wrote 1 Corinthians. He said, so, too, did the Corinthians themselves understand, Paul. In fact, at this day the Corinthians do veil their virgins. What the apostles taught, their disciples approved. Clement of Alexandria, 150 to 215, an early theologian, wrote, "Woman and man are to go to church decently attired. Dot for this is the wish of the word, since it is becoming for her to pray veiled." Another theologian, Hippolytus of Rome, 170 to 236, while giving instructions for church gatherings, said. Let all the women have their heads covered with an opaque cloth. Early church history bears witness that in Rome, Antioch, and Africa the custom of wearing the head covering became the norm for the church. Later, in the 4th century, the church leader John Chrysostom 347-407 stated, dot the business of whether to cover one's head was legislated by nature see 1 Cor 11 -15. When I say nature, I mean God for he is the one who created nature. Take note, therefore, what great harm comes from overturning these boundaries. And don't tell me that this is a small sin. Jerome 347-420 noted that the hair cap and the prey veil as worn by Christian women in Egypt and Syria, do not go about with heads uncovered in defiance of the apostles' command, for they wear a close-fitting cap and a veil. Augustine of Hippo 354-430 writes about the hair covering. It is not becoming, even in married women, to uncover their hair, since the Apostle commands women to keep their heads covered. 
Early Christian art also confirms that women wore head coverings during this time period. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Middle Ages and Early Modern Era. Topic: Until at least the 18th century, the wearing of a hair covering, both in the public and while attending church, was regarded as customary for Christian women in Mediterranean, European, Middle Eastern, and African cultures. Women who did not wear hair coverings were interpreted to be a prostitute or adulteress. In Europe, law stipulated that married women who uncovered their head in public was evidence of her infidelity. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Current practices. Topic: <laughs> Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Styles. Topic: <laughs> Topic. Tradition Topic. Topic. Eastern Christianity Topic. Some Eastern Catholic, Eastern Orthodox and Oriental Orthodox churches require women to cover their heads while in church, an example of this practice occurs in the Russian Orthodox Church. In Albania, Christian women often wear white veils, although their eyes are visible. Moreover, in that nation, in Orthodox Christian church buildings, women are separated from men by latticework partitions during the church service. In other cases, the choice may be individual, or vary within a country or jurisdiction. Among Eastern Orthodox women in Greece, the practice of wearing a head covering in church gradually declined over the course of the 20th century. In the United States, the custom can vary depending on the denomination and congregation, and the origins of that congregation. Catholics in South Korea still wear the head covering. Eastern Orthodox clergy of all levels have head coverings, sometimes with veils in the case of monastics or celibates, that are donned and removed at certain points in the services. In U.S. churches they are less commonly worn. Eastern Orthodox nuns wear a head covering called an apostolnik, which is worn at all times, and is the only part of the monastic habit which distinguishes them from Eastern Orthodox monks. <laughs> Western Christianity in Western Europe and North America at the start of the 20th century, women in most mainstream Christian denominations wore head coverings during church services. These included many Anglican, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, and Roman Catholic churches. Head covering for women was unanimously held by the Roman Catholic Church until the 1983 Code of Canon Law came into effect. Historically, women were required to veil their heads when receiving the Eucharist following the councils of Autun and Angers. Similarly, in 585, the Synod of Auxerre, France, stated that women should wear a head covering during the Holy Mass. The Synod of Rome in 743 declared that a woman praying in church without her head covered brings shame upon her head, according to the word of the Apostle, a position later supported by Pope Nicholas I in 866, for church services. Quote, in the Middle Ages, Thomas Aquinas 1225 said that the man existing under God should not have a covering over his to show he is immediately subject to God, but the woman should wear a covering to show that besides God she is naturally subject to another. In the 1917 Code of Canon Law it was a requirement that women cover their heads in church. It said, Women, however, shall have a covered head and be modestly dressed, especially when they approach the table of the Lord. Veiling was not specifically addressed in the 1983 revision of the Code, which declared the 1917 Code abrogated. According to the new Code, former law only has interpretive weight in norms that are repeated in the 1983 Code, all other norms are simply abrogated. There is no provision made for norms that are not repeated in the 1983 Code. Among the Protestant reformers, Martin Luther, the founder of the Lutheran Church, encouraged wives to wear a veil in public worship. John Calvin, the founder of the Reformed Churches, and John Knox, the founder of the Presbyterian Church, both called for women to wear head coverings in public worship. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, held that women, especially in a religious assembly, should keep on her veil. In nations in regions such as Eastern Europe and the Indian subcontinent, nearly all Christian women wear head coverings during church services. 
In the United Kingdom, it is common for women to wear a Christian head covering while attending formal religious services, such as church weddings. At worship, in parts of the Western world, many women started to wear bonnets as their head coverings, and later, hats became predominant. However, eventually, in North America and parts of Western Europe, this practice started to decline, with some exceptions including Christians who wear plain dress, such as conservative Quakers and many Anabaptists including Mennonites, Hutterites, Old German Baptist Brethren, Apostolic Christians and Amish. Moravian females wear a lace head covering called a haub, especially when serving as deaners. Traditionalist Catholics, as well as holiness Christians who practice the doctrine of outward holiness, also practice head covering. In addition to the Lestadian Lutheran Church, the Plymouth Brethren, and the more conservative Scottish and Irish Presbyterian and Dutch Reformed churches, some female believers in the Churches of Christ cover too. Pentecostal churches, such as the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith, the Pentecostal Mission, the Christian Congregation, and Believers Church observe the veiling of women as well. Female members of Jehovah's Witnesses may only lead prayer and teaching when no baptized male is available to, and must do so wearing a head covering. Nuns of the Roman Catholic, Lutheran, and Anglican traditions often wear a veil as a part of their religious habit. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Oriental Christianity. Topic: <inaudible> Coptic women historically covered their head and face in public and in the presence of men. During the 19th century, upper-class urban Christian and Muslim women in Egypt wore a garment which included a head cover and a burqa muslin cloth that covered the lower nose and the mouth. The name of this garment, Haraba, derives from early Christian and Judaic religious vocabulary, which may indicate the origins of the garment itself. Unmarried women generally wore white veils while married women wore black. The practice began to decline by the early 20th century. Topic. Scriptural basis Topic. Topic. Hebrew Bible, Old Testament Topic. Passages such as Genesis chapter 24 verse 65, Numbers chapter 5 verse 18 and Isaiah chapter 47 verse 2 indicate that some women chose to wear a head covering during the Old Testament time period. However, no Old Testament passage contains a command from God for women to wear a head covering. Topic. Christian Bible, New Testament Topic. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 2-16 contains the only passage in the New Testament referring to the use of head coverings for women and the uncovering of the heads of men. Paul introduces this passage by praising the Corinthian Christians for remembering the teachings, also translated as traditions or ordinances, that he had passed on to them. Verse 2. Paul then explains the Christian use of head coverings using the subjects of headship, glory, angels, natural hair lengths, and the practice of the churches. What he specifically said about each of these subjects has led to differences in interpretation and practice among Bible commentators and Christian congregations. Topic: Interpretive issues. Topic: There are several key sections of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 2 to 16 that Bible commentators and Christian congregations have held differing opinions about which have resulted in a diversity of practices regarding the use of head coverings. Gender-based headship. Paul connects the use or non-use of head coverings with the biblical distinctions between each gender. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3, Paul wrote, "Christ is the head of every man, and the man is the head of a woman." He immediately continues with a gender-based teaching on the use of head coverings. Every man who has something on his head while praying or prophesying disgraces his head. But every woman who has her head uncovered while praying or prophesying disgraces her head. Glory and worship. Paul next explains that the use or non-use of head coverings is related to God's glory during times of prayer and prophesy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 7, he states that man is the glory of God and that for this reason a man ought not to have his head covered. In the same verse, Paul also states that the woman is the glory of man. He explains that statement in the subsequent two verses by referring to the woman. 
s creation in NASB, and then concludes, "...therefore the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head." Verse 10. In other words, the "...glory of God," man is to be uncovered during times of worship, while the "...glory of man," woman is to be covered. Angels, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 10, Paul says therefore the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head, because of the angels, many interpreters admit that Paul does not provide much explanation for the role of angels in this context. Some popular interpretations of this passage are 1, an appeal not to offend the angels by disobedience to Paul's instructions, 2, a command to accurately show angels a picture of the created order, Ephesians chapter 3 verses 10, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12, 3, a warning for us to obey as a means of accountability, since the angels are watching, 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 21, 4, to be like the angels who cover themselves in the presence of God, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 2, and 5, not to be like the fallen angels who did not stay in the role that God created for them Jude chapter 1 verse 6 Nature and hair lengths in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13 to 15 Paul asks a rhetorical question about the propriety of head coverings and then answers it himself with a lesson from nature judge for yourselves is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered does not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair it is a dishonor to him but if a woman has long hair it is a glory to her for her hair is given to her for a covering. In this passage, some see Paul as indicating that since a woman naturally covers her head with long hair, she likewise ought to cover it with a cloth covering while praying or prophesying. Others interpreters see the statement, her hair is given to her for a covering, as indicating that all instances of head covering in the chapter refer only to the covering of long hair. Church practice, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 16, Paul responded to any readers who may disagree with his teaching about the use of head coverings, but if one is inclined to be contentious, we have no other practice, nor have the churches of God, this may indicate that head coverings were considered a standard, universal Christian symbolic practice rather than a local cultural custom. In other words, while Christian churches were spread out geographically and contained a diversity of cultures, they all practiced head covering for female members. Topic. Interpretive conclusions and resulting practices Topic. Due to various interpretive issues such as those listed above, Bible commentators and Christian congregations have a diversity of conclusions and practices regarding head covering. One primary area of debate is whether Paul's call for men to uncover their heads and women to cover their heads was intended to be followed by Christians outside of the first century Corinthian church. While some Christian congregations continue to use head coverings for female members, others do not. Some churches view Christian head covering as a practice that Paul intended for all Christians, in all locations, during all time periods and so they continue the practice within their congregations. They base their interpretation on the God-ordained order of headship. Another interpretation is that Paul's commands regarding head covering were a cultural mandate that was only for the first century Corinthian church. Often, interpreters will state that Paul was simply trying to create a distinction between uncovered Corinthian prostitutes and godly Corinthian Christian women. Under that interpretation, a church will not practice Christian head covering. Some Christians believe that Paul stated that long hair is the covering when it comes to modesty. See 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 14 to 15. Feminist theologian Catherine Bushnell provides another interpretation that similarly teaches that Paul was not intending for women to cover their hair with a cloth covering, for modesty. See also Coif Complementarianism 1 Corinthians Headscarf Kerchief Ordinance Plain dress Tishal, Orthodox Jewish head covering Veil Topic. References Topic. Topic. Further reading Topic. Topic. External links Topic. Head covering through the centuries, scroll publishing 
The Head Covering Movement, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 for today Creation, Culture, and Corinthians 1984, John Piper